Okay, in this tutorial, I'm going to go over how to use Google Cloud Vision with the Raspberry Pi and the Raspberry Pi camera. We're going to use a Raspberry Pi um, and we're going to use a Raspberry Pi camera to take some pictures and to automatically upload them to Google Cloud, analyze them on Google Cloud, and get back uh, some text data about what's in the picture, whether it be a face or a logo or um, a landmark. You can use Google Cloud Vision to analyze a lot, making the Raspberry Pi and the Raspberry Pi camera pretty powerful. So starting right off the bat, we're going to use a Raspberry Pi. Um, in my case, I'll be using a Raspberry Pi 3. We'll need uh, Raspbian for Robots uh, operating systems. This has a lot of the tools that need to be set up, already set up on the Raspberry Pi uh, operating system. We'll be stationary for now, so we'll be using the Raspberry Pi power supply, a 5-volt uh, USB power supply, and it'll be plugged into the wall. We'll also be using a Raspberry Pi camera to take the pictures. Um, finally, we'll need a Google Cloud account. So Google Cloud account is very easy to set up. You can use your Gmail or your Google login that you already have, um, and the first 60 days of it are free. So there's a link to it on our website, but it's basically free trial. Google-console.googlecloud.freetrial. So our first step after we've got a Google Cloud account is we're going to do a Google Cloud setup. So the um, once you have the account created, um, we can create a uh, we can go ahead and start to create a projects page. Now with a Google Cloud account set up, we'll go ahead and take our first step, which is to create a new project for Google Cloud. So we'll go to our dashboard and we're going to create a Google Cloud project up here at the top where it says um, next to Google Cloud Platform. You'll have any other projects up there. Um, you can click on Create Project. And we'll give this one, since we're doing vision, we'll call it vision one. We'll see that a unique ID is generated down here. We're not gonna choose any advanced options. We'll just go to create. You'll see that it's creating the project down here. And we're done. When I, when I created this, it automatically redirected me to the, uh, the dashboard for this project, but you can select the dashboard. We created uh, Vision 1, so we go there. It takes us to this dashboard uh, in Google Cloud Platform. If we click the hamburger over here on the left next to Google Cloud Platform, we'll see a whole bunch of different options for this project. The first thing I'm going to do is go over to Billing, the little credit card over here on the left. And when I click on that, I'm going to enable billing. I've got my free trial. I've already got this all set up, um, but that would be uh, what you do. You walk through here, enter in some billing information, and you should be okay and good to go. So now I'm going to go back to my dashboard. And I'll look at vision one again, the project. Now with our billing setup, we're going to go ahead and uh, set up the API that we we'll used. So if we go to API manager, still in vision one. Um, up here, still got that selected. I can see a bunch of different APIs that I can enable, but I'm gonna go ahead and create some credentials. So if I click on the key over here on the left side, once I'm an API manager, and I am prompted to create some credentials. So um, what we'll do is go on the click down of create credentials. And you've got a couple different options, the API key, an OAuth cloud client ID, um, and a service account key. For this, we're going to create a service account key if I click on. So I've got a few options here. I've got the app engine and a compute engine, but I'm going to create a new service account. So if I click on that, I've got to give my service account a new name. I'm going to call it uh, Vision 1 again, and um, we'll select a role. Given a couple of options here, but we'll code a project and we'll give it the owner role so we have full access. And this is going to give our Raspberry Pi, once we take the JSON credentials that we're creating, 
It's going to give it full access to everything um, that uh, that Google has to offer through this API. So we've selected all that. We're going to leave this as JSON. And if we click Create, we should get a little creating, and Google is doing a few things. Great. And I've got a new private key here. So this uh, will start an automatic download. You can see that started to download that JSON. Um, and this is the only copy of the key. So we actually need this file to go onto the Raspberry Pi, which we'll do in the next step. Now I've uh, downloaded the uh, JSON key locally. I'm going to connect to my Raspberry Pi. I'm using FileZilla. And for that, we're just F SFTPing into dex.local, which is uh, already set up on our network and connected. Um, so once we get there, um, we'll go ahead and take the JSON key that was generated and we'll just put it into the home directory, which is where we're going to work. So we've got that connected. I'm just going to drag the file over and dump it into Pi and that should be it. We should have the JSON key and the credentials all on this Pi. Now in the tutorial, we recommend that you change the password. So if you still have the default password, which is by the way, robots1234 for uh, Raspbian for robots, then you should definitely change it or else, uh, especially if you plan on using this long term and leaving it out. Um, for this tutorial, we're putting it into the home uh, Pi directory. You can see that there. Um, and uh, we'll be doing all the rest of the tutorial out of that directory. Okay, so last step is we're going to go ahead and enable the APIs. If I go back to the Google Cloud Platform um, dashboard, I've got my project selected here. I'm looking for one of these boxes is going to be use Google APIs. And at the bottom, there's a link that says enable and manage APIs. So if I click on that, I should see a few different APIs pop up. And up here, I'll just go to enable API. And if I hit that plus, um, I've got a whole list of different APIs that I can enable for this project here. But I've selected Vision One, and if I click on the More under Google Cloud APIs, on the way at the bottom, I've got Vision API. So we'll click on that. and we'll click the play enable. And we'll have this great dashboard here where we can see sort of traffic and we can see errors that may have happened later on if we want to dive a little deep, deeper that directory. So I'm going to connect to the Pi and start operating. Since I'm using Raspbian for robots, all I need to do is pull up a um, uh, browser window and type in dex.local and we'll connect to the ras uh, Raspberry Pi. Um, and I've got the option of doing terminal. I'm going to open that up in a new tab so I can go back in and that pulls up uh, terminal. I can go ahead and just uh, log in with the standard robots1234. Just bring that into the screen. Um, I can also pull up the desktop here and that's the same uh, password. So First step we're going to do is a little bit of uh, Raspberry Pi uh, preparation. We'll need to put uh, pip on and we'll need to put a couple of libraries on to make sure that the, uh, the Google stuff runs well enough. So I'm going to go back over to the desktop and I've opened up terminal here and uh, on the Raspberry Pi and I'm going to operate in here. First up is uh, installing pip. Uh, so what we're going to do is upgrade pip. Pip will, it's already installed on the Raspberry for Robots uh, image, but do sudo pip install upgrade pip. Well, once we're done with pip, we'll also uh, add another library called libjpeg 8 dev that we need um, for uh, some of the vision processing that's going to go on. I'm just going to pause this for a second. Okay, next we're going to install Google API Python client, which we'll need because we're doing this tutorial in Python. That's google-api-python-client.
And now that we've installed the uh, Google API Python client, we'll uh, upgrade Pillow as well. So that's another pip installation. Pillow. And finally, we're going to install Python Pi Camera. So that's native to the Raspberry Pi, but that's a, just one more library we're going to need um, for using the, uh, the Raspberry Pi camera. It's Python dash PI camera. So uh, before we go any further, let's go ahead and make sure that the Raspberry Pi camera actually works. So go ahead and just run um, a Raspberry uh, Raspi still, which is R A S P I S T I L L dash O, and then we'll call it image.jpg. Not a zero, it's actually a O as an Oscar. Take a second and let's just see what that picture looks like. Yep, got the Raspberry Pi box in there. So I've got the camera pointed to the box and the camera is actually working. So that's good to see. And we're. So I've got my camera working. I've got my examples. Open up the command line here. We're going to go into super user and we're going to set up our credentials. So these credentials, again, this is the JSON file. We need that in the home slash pi directory. Um, we're going to um, make those credentials available to any Python program running. So we're going to use a variable called Google application credentials. And we're going to set that to the JSON file. So if we type in export and then it's all caps, Google underscore application application credentials. Then we set that to our vision file. I'm not going to type the entire name in because I can just start typing vision and the rest of the file will fill itself in, all the numbers there. And we've got our JSON file there. So if I set that, um, if I want to do logo detection, we've got the Raspberry Pi camera pointed towards the Raspberry Pi box. So now I just need to type in Python. Let's see what the file names are again. We're going to do the camera vision logo first. So if I type in uh, Python, camera vision logo dot pi. It returns Raspberry Pi. So let's go ahead and take a look real quick at the file, the picture that it took and make sure it was of a Raspberry Pi. There's image and what it did was it caught this logo. So it picked up this logo and um, and returned that. Let's take a look at the code really quick and just see what was supposed to happen. Actually, open it up with Genie. Gives us a little more colorful of a view of this. See, here in Maine, we're going to take a photo. This function is just taking the photo and saving it as the file image. And then this is the actual querying function that's going to communicate with Google here. So we're going to open up the image um, named image. We're going to send it up to Google asking for logo detection. And we've set the max results here at line 37 as one. But if I wanted to say open that up to 10, I'll get back a few more different results. You can see that here all it does is try to read the JSON. We pump the JSON with the service request that execute um, goes into response. And then the label is the individual response for that uh, JSON that's returned. So we want to see a little bit more. We can go ahead and comment this out um, and just um, we'll just try to print the full response from JSON so we can see everything that the Google Cloud is re uh, returning. So here we'll just uh, Print response and then we'll save it. Go back and execute that one more time. 
back into super user. Oh, I meant to do sudo super user. Now with the new logo uh, sort of modified, let's see what it returns. Oh, forgot to add my credentials. Export. Google application credentials. Great, get back this unpretty JSON that gives me a bunch of annotations here about the location of um, what score. It's 21% certain that it's uh, something here, but we've got the Raspberry. Raspberry Pi is what's returned as the description. Different coordinates about where the logo is. You can see you can get a lot of great information just out of um, uh, running the JSON like this. So. So I've gone back and I'm just going to put the response back in and still print the full response. So we'll be putting out the truncated uh, JSON response and the full JSON response as well. And I put two logos in front of it. So now I've got a piece of or a pack of Juicy Fruit and a pack of Double Mint gum in front of the Raspberry Pi camera. I'll just go ahead and run the logo one last time and see what we get back. Great. Got at least the double mint in there. Let's see. So the double mint was returned in, in the JSON. Definitely says that double mint is there. Let's look at the picture and make sure that both were actually in there. Yeah, it looks like Juicy Fruit was kind of cut off there. So maybe Google didn't see the entire thing. Maybe if I change the camera just a little bit. Okay, we adjusted the gum just a little bit. Let's see if we can both get them into the shot. We'll run the same Python script again. Great, we've got both double mint, it looks like, and juicy fruit showing up. So we can see the double mints over here. And the juicy fruit is the second line item um, in the JSON. Double mint is the first one. That's what the JSON says uh, down here at the in the cleaned up um, output. And Got it working. Let's just take a quick look at our picture. Great. We can see enough of the double mint that it Google recognized that there's that brand in there, uh, that logo, and it's also found the uh, Wrigley's Juicy Fruit logo in there as well. Okay, so let's move on to facial detection. This is the second tutorial that's our second example Python program that's up in our uh, GitHub. But if camera vision dash or camera dash vision dash face dot pi. We'll go ahead and try running that, but let's take a look at the code before we do. Here we're querying, we're going to send the command to Google for face detection, um, and we're going to ask for 10 results back. If you go through the documentation, you can see a whole lot more things you can do with this, but what we're going to do is just get back the raw JSON dump and then just uh, execute it, I've, or to just explore it a little bit. Um, I've written it so that we get a, a pretty version of the JSON back, but um, let's see what it has. So just go back to the command line and enter the same old, uh, same command. Uh, Python camera vision dash face and I'm going to turn the Raspberry Pi camera towards my face and smile. Great, got a little bit of data. Let's look at that picture real quick. That's what's in image. That's me. Oh, my eyes are closed. Let's see what it says about that. So you can see that you get quite a bit of data back about face um, you queried about face, but some of the fun stuff is whether someone's angry, you'll get angry likelihood. It's very unlikely. You can see in the picture, I am very unlikely to be angry. At least I'm not, not frowning, uh, not smiling, but um, blurred likelihood. It's a pretty clear picture. And then you sort of get a bunch of information in here about um, where different parts of the face are. So, um, it's interesting here you've got headwear, headwear likelihood, not wearing a hat, joy likelihood, I'm not very joyous. I would say in the picture I'm not very joyous either. Um, we just go through here, look, we've got information on the right eye, the left eye, where the eyebrows are, um, and just 
just a whole bunch of fun stuff about different parts of my face here and where they are in relation to that uh, in in the uh, in the picture. Finally, you got a couple of things down here. You get back the sorrow likelihood whether I'm sorrowful or whether I'm surprised. Um, all very like unlikely. Um, so I didn't have much emotion when we took this picture, but that's sort of how face uh, analysis works. Finally, for this tutorial, let's look at label uh, label annotation by Google Vision. Here we can see we for we've got the camera vision labeled the third example in our Google Vision API tutorial. Um, here we're, we've changed our type to label detection, um, and we're just going to spit back some results and see what we get. So it uh, works very similar. Um, go back to the command line and just take a quick look at camera-vision-label. I've got the camera pointed to a GoPi Go wheel, so let's see what that turns back. Great, so let's take a look at our picture real quick too. There's a quick image of a wheel for the GoPi Go a Raspberry Pi robot, and it looks like um, uh, Google Vision has returned yellow, which is certainly true. Uh, lightning, not sure where it got that, but maybe because we have these polygons and it kind of looks like lightning. And circle, it's certainly a circle. A little disappointing that it didn't come back with wheel, but maybe I just can't see some of the tire treads. If we turned it a different way, uh, we might get something different. We can see that it's 95% certain that it's a, that the uh, wheel is yellow and that it's 63% certain that it's lightning, so not a great score or a great job on that. Um, and it's 60% certain that it's a circle, so that's great. Why don't I try just turning it? Just try turning it about 45 degrees towards the camera and try running it one more time and see if we get a slightly different uh, outcome here. Oh, just got worse. Let's see what the picture looks like. Yeah, well, I can clearly see that that's a wheel. But I guess Google's having a hard time doing that. You can see that it's yellow, and that's uh, 94%. So that's pretty much it for Google Vision tutorial. I would encourage you to go to our uh, GitHub account um, at dexterend backslash Google Vision tutorials and get some of the Python examples. Uh, take a look around um, some of the documentation, see how you could use this um, on some robots yourself.